Greetings and salutations, comic book conversationalists all across the fruited plain, from border to border, coast to coast, and all points in between. Welcome once again, comic book hangover. My name is Scott, and we're going to be talking about some new comics and some new just stuff in general uh, that that I picked up today from my LCS. Of course, here we are, February first, twenty twenty three. Still weird for me to say that, but that's where we're at. And, of course, the new month means that my credit at my LCS renews, so I do some stuff for them. In return, I get credit that I can use for my comics and some of my stuff. So, um, let's... First, I want to I wanna do a bit of a plug here. This is um, sort of a crossover from Still Ill Princess and Coffin Comics. Still Ill Princess, of course, does uh, finally got uh, this dead Mendoza, and he finally got Zombie Tramp back. And Zombie Tramp's one of the most interesting characters. But they're teaming up with Coffin Comics... Brian Polito, and they have a crossover, Dead Meets Death, November 3rd, 2023. So we've got some time, but Lady Death Meets Zombie Tramp should be a hoot and a holler. My LCS has a whole stack of these things. I'm going to see if I can get some more of them. But anybody who's interested in either one of those two characters or both of them, that's definitely something you want to take a look at and check out. Um, stuff that I picked up this week, I got a poster this is the cover art for Ghost Rider number 10. And that's uh, the, the face-to-face, the face-off between Ghost Rider and uh, I think it's the exhaust. So I got a poster for that. It's just mostly because it's a Ghost Rider, um, Ghost Rider poster and I can never have too many of those. Uh, I also picked up this a special order that it did some time ago. And it did arrive. It arrived a couple of weeks ago. And since this week was such a really small week for me, and I guess next week is also going to be a really small week. But I was able to pick this up. This is a Funko Pop. I try not to get any more of these, but every once in a while, they'll still do one that I want to get. But this is the uh, from the Diamond Collection is what it says. The 40th Anniversary Elvira Funko with a glittery red dress. I also noticed that in her hand, she's holding a heart. That's pretty awesome. Elvira. I love some Elvira. I will always get Elvira swag whenever I can afford it. Uh, also... This is from last week. Again, and as always, like I say, my LCS, they do these raffles. I guess every $5 that you spend, uh, you get uh, a ticket that you can put in for a selection of up to 10 books that they give away. I think it's now there's there's uh, eight books, and then they do a voucher for back issues and a voucher for new books. I have a $10 voucher up there for back issues. I just need to be able to find the time to get in there and actually look for some back issues that I could use. I got to look up, look up and see what back issues I need. But I did win a book last week, and this is one I was actually kind of curious about. I think I mentioned it last week as well. This is Archie versus the World, sort of a uh, Archie meets Mad Max. It's a one shot. It looks interesting. I was hoping that would win this because I really wanted to read it. So I'm glad I got that. Now for the books that I picked up this week, this is going to be a mix of stuff that came out last week and a few weeks ago as well. Uh, but I had a I have to do like a round dollar amount for my credit. So. Uh, well, this is what I picked up. I grabbed Gargoyles number one. Uh, this is, I think it's just a regular cover. I don't really need a whole lot of variant covers. I'm not really into Gargoyles, but I actually kind of needed to get this in order to uh, round it up to an even dollar amount uh, in order to use my credit. So figured, what the hell, why not? Let's check out Gargoyles number one. Um, it might be a hoot and a holler. It might be, might be pretty good. Uh, I also grabbed, and this one actually came out a couple of weeks ago, maybe about a month ago. This is Godzilla Rivals. Uh, now, Godzilla Rivals, it's a series of one-shots that uh, up until this point featured Godzilla versus Mothra, Godzilla versus, you know, all these other monsters, Gigan and so forth. Uh, now, they kind of changed it a little bit. So, then now, it's, now it's Godzilla Rivals is the title. And now we've got, uh, like this one here is Rodan versus Ibera, which is the giant claw, uh, giant crab monster from jo uh, Godzilla versus the sea monster. So, we've changed the format. So now Godzilla Rivals is just sort of like an overall title, and each issue is going to feature two other monsters fighting. I don't know if Godzilla's on the cover. I don't know if he's inside it. I can't wait to check it out myself. I did get another variant cover for Darkwing Duck. I think this is actually the last variant cover I got. This is the this is the Merka and Dolfo cover. I love her art. She's an amazing artist, and from what little I've seen of her on, on social media, she's a pretty sweet chick, too. She's a really nice person, which is nice to see for a change. Uh, but I had to get her cover because, I mean, the way he, she draws Darkwing's uh, cape is just amazing. Next on the stack, and I'm just going to order that they're in my stack, 
This one I almost put back because I found out that this this book, this is Silver Surfer Ghost Light, number one. I think it's a five-issue miniseries. I was excited about this because it's go, it's a Silver Surfer, and the uh, Ghost Light character, this character here is actually Al Harper. He was a character that was in the Silver Surfer, uh, the 60s run, the original run of the Surfer, and he was a great character. Uh, he was one of the few characters that the Surfer ran into, if I remember right, that showed him that humans are not all jerks. You know, they're not all assholes. And he wound up getting killed. And so, you know, the surfer, you know, gave him a special uh, burial and put a, you know, special cosmic flame on there as as tribute to his fallen friend. And when I heard about this and I heard that Al Harper was coming back, I was really curious about that. It's like, he's a great character. Uh, hopefully they don't, you know, uh, mess it up or ruin the character. But then I find out that the only reason why they did this book was for diversity, apparently. Because uh, Marvel made a big deal um, uh, in an article that I read about this. This is the first Silver Surfer series that has an all-black creative team. And they brought back Al Harper, not because it's a great character, not because he was an important character, but because they wanted to have more diversity uh, and more diverse uh, superheroes or something in the Marvel Universe because we don't have enough diversity in, in Marvel. So those two points alone kill my interest in this series. <laughs> To be honest with you, I was excited about Al Harper, you know, doing something more with him, maybe learning more about the man himself. But the fact that the only reason why they're doing this is because of the color of his skin and not because of him being a great character, honestly, ruins the story for me. I don't have much interest. I'm still going to read it. I still picked it up. I got it on order. I'm going to read it. I flipped through it at the LCS, and the Silver Surfer is actually only in two panels. He's actually in one panel that's like the bottom third of the page and he's got one page that's it that bring that that right there brings back um a bad memories of a previous silver surfer silver surfer series where in the first issue he didn't really appear at all and he was barely in it um so there's there's a lot going against this book right now you know starting with the whole diversity thing which i'm, I'm okay with diversity in comics we've always had a great uh a great amount of diversity in comics and there's always been you know a, a great selection of characters but when you bring back a great character, not because he's a great character, but because of the color his skin happens to be, that there's an R word that goes to that that I can't quite place. I'm not going to use it. I know what the word is. I can place it. I'm not going to say it because the whole thing is BS. Um, but hopefully, hopefully it's good. I flipped through it. The art looks okay uh, from what I flipped through. So uh, I'm going to give it a chance. But like I tell you, I'm really tired of this nonsense where we get these creators, and I think the writer, he's not even really a comic book guy. He's, he's you know, he writes regular prose books. They come in, and, you know, I mean, we get some, some, some comic book writers and artists as well where they just, they just, they look at what a character is before they look at who the character is. And I don't know if I can, I, I can, I don't, I'm not going to speak for other comic book fans. I'm going to speak for myself, solely my opinion. But to me, who a character is, is more important and adds more excitement to the stories than what a character is. I don't care if a character is black, white, Hispanic. I could care less if a character is gay or straight. I I could give a damn. Um, <coughs> I want great characters. Um, Miles Morales. First thing I saw of him, he had a, he had a sweet-ass costume, and that got my attention. Happened to be black. Don't care. He's got a great costume, and he's a cool character. Um, Luke Cage, great character. Yeah, he's black, but you know what? He's a cool-ass character. So it's it's just one of these things like, I don't know, maybe I, I might be in the absolute minority of comic book fan where I'm just, I don't care about the ethnicity, the sexuality, the gender. Just give me a great character. Give me some good stories. Give me some amazing art, and everything will fall into place. You don't need to have your social... Um, your social agenda, your personal politics, and all that crap, and they just give me some great comic books. You can sort of, you know, plant your little seeds in there if you want. But if 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 you're doing a book because of what a character is before who that character is, you're doing it wrong. Okay, that's my own personal opinion. And let's get back into my books. All right, next one. This one came out a couple of weeks ago. Great series from Volt. I'm glad to have it back. Barbaric number one. This is Barbaric held the pay. Number one, I cannot wait to read that one. I wish I'd have picked it up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, new this week, and this is actually the only book that was on my pull list this week, 
Radiant Black number, what about number 21? So glad to have Radiant Black back on my pull list. Um, the peripheral books I will be getting um, in uh, trade paperbacks. So Radiant Red, Radiant Pink, uh, Rogue Sun, and all these other books. I'm going to be getting those in trade. But Radiant Black, the main one, I'm getting month-to-month -month basis. Uh, so this one also came out last week. I kind of overlooked it. There were two covers for it. This is the one I really, really like. This is Zombie Side Day One, number one. I think this is another four or five issue miniseries. But, you know, a chick with a chainsaw. She's also, I just noticed also, she's got roller skates on. So you got a chick here who is able to, to, to fight zombies with a chainsaw, wearing roller skates. That is one kick-ass chick right there. That is a that is a chick that you do not want to mess with. Yeah, she's she's kind of running, so clearly she she understands. She's smart enough to know when to fight and when to flee. And she's probably, I've not read the book, and I don't know if this character is actually in the book, but I would say she from looking at this thing here, she's probably like, you know what? I need more room to kick more zombie ass. And that's probably what she's going to do. But you got a, you got a great looking chick with a chainsaw ring, ring roller skates. That's amazing. That's awesome. So um, that said, those are all the books that I picked up this week, along with my poster and my Elvira Funko. Uh, sorry for getting on my, my soapbox again. I don't really do that a whole lot. I try not to. I don't I don't like to get too preachy on, on my channel here because this is all about comic books. But every once in a while, you know, something happens that I just cannot not say something about because there's people in the industry that just annoy the hell out of me sometimes and there's there's so many so many people like there's there's certain websites abr <coughs> that will kiss their ass and not not hold them to task and not say well why are you doing it like this no they're just gonna kiss ass um we don't have enough people that it, within comics journalism such as it is uh that's willing to say hey you know what maybe you could just do it like this or why are you doing it like this? And what is the whole point? So, you know, I, I just got on my soapbox. I apologize. You know, again, it's just my own personal opinion. Uh, I don't have anything wrong. I don't have anything against having characters who are minority, like uh, Miles, uh, Miles, uh, Miles Morales, but Miguel O'Hara is my favorite. One of my favorite uh, alternate Spider-Mans. Uh, my son loves Miles Morales. Which I'm so happy about. I can't wait to introduce him to Spider Punk. I think I'm hoping that he'll like Spider Punk a little bit more than Miles. But you know, we'll see what happens. But that said, cover of the week, I gotta go with this one for cover of the week, and that is Chick with a Chainsaw fighting zombies wearing roller skates. Cause you just don't get any better than that. That is one kick ass chick, and you gotta love a kick ass chick. So uh that said, we got a video that's going over 10 minutes. I'm trying to keep these around 10 minutes, but that said. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. It is after 5 o'clock. It is, as I'm doing this, this is 5.43 as I'm doing this. And we still got some daylight. This is great. This is awesome. So uh, we also got a lot of snow here in Michigan. So, uh, but that said, again, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope everybody had a great comic book day. Uh, this is a really small week. This week, uh, I only had, like I said, I only had Radiant Black and Silver Surfer on my pull list. Uh, so super small week. When I was down there, there were some guys that were coming in that didn't have any books that pulled this week. They usually will get some. Uh, I guess next week is also supposed to be a small week, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but that said, it, it, if if you got some books, I'm, I hope you did. I hope you got some books, and I hope they're really good because there's a lot of amazing books by some very talented people coming out these days. Uh, but again, let's wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your support. I, I mean, I've got over 230 subscribers now, which is absolutely amazing. I so support that. I, I'm not, not, I don't support it. I so appreciate that. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for the subscriptions, the comments, the likes, the views, all that fun stuff. I really appreciate it more than I can possibly say. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to do something soon. <laughs> Uh, once we, you know, once I get my family back someplace more solid and, uh, and I get my books out, my, my collectibles and stuff, I'll maybe can do, you know, some sort of an appreciation thing for my subscribers. So we'll see what we can do, but, um, everybody have a great week. I know here in Michigan, we're going to have some very, very cold weather coming up, uh, like 20 degree wind, 20 degree below zero wind chills, which is the coldest we've had this year, but the next week we're supposed to be in the thirties and forties. Um, but, um, you know, hope everybody has a great week. Has a great weekend. We'll see you all next week with some more comic books. That's all I got to say. Have a great have a great time everybody. See you next week.